Hello, my name is Fiona, and I am a certified teacher and a Praxis coach with Study.com. Are you preparing to take the Praxis 5017 exam? This exam covers multiple topics in elementary education. These practice questions cover the subtopic of math. Let's review some of the types of math curriculum questions you may encounter on the exam. Let's get started. Our first problem. You are trying to teach students how to solve basic word problems by using algebra. Which of the following is not necessary for the students to know beforehand? A. Solving systems of equations with the use of matrices. B. Solving algebraic equations. C. Evaluating algebraic expressions. Or D. Representing words with algebraic expressions. All right, let's look at the question again. It is looking for what is not necessary for the students to know beforehand. So let's keep that in mind. So representing words with algebraic equations, D, we're looking at teaching students to solve basic word problems using algebra. So representing words with algebraic expressions would be appropriate. C, evaluating algebraic expressions. This is something they ought to know before. This is substituting numbers for variables in order to complete the equation. So it would be key in learning how to solve basic word problems. So this is something we would want. B, solving algebraic equation. So yes, if we're using algebra to teach how to solve basic word problems, then Solving algebraic equations is a skill they ought to know beforehand as well. Now, lastly, solving systems of equations with the use of matrices. Matrices are used to create graphs, statistics, and to calculate scientific studies, etc. So this is not something students would need to know in order to solve basic word problems using algebra. So the answer is A. Our second problem. Which of the following accurately describes how a topic or lesson's content is modified to suit various learners' needs or learning preferences? A, equivalent fractions. B, differentiated content. C, accessing multiple pathways. Or D, assigning group projects. So, we're, let's look at the question again. Which of the following accurately describes how a topic or lesson content is modified to suit the learner's needs or learning preferences. Equivalent fractions is a topic, so we can eliminate that right away. Differentiated content. This is using different methods to teach the same concept to best adapt to our learner's needs. So, which of the following accurately describes how a topic or lesson's content is modified to suit learners' needs? The answer would be B. But let us look at the other two just to explain each of them. Accessing multiple pathways. This term refers to adjusting academic opportunities based on each student's interests and needs in order to help the student achieve their goals. For example, high school graduation. So we know that wouldn't be the case here. And D, assigning group projects. Assigning group projects, this would force other students to be responsible for the dissemination of content. So that would not be a modification to suit a learner's need. So we can confidently say it's B, differentiated content. Problem number three. To model a multiplication problem, the teacher created the array above. Which multiplication problem was she evaluating? So we've got A, two by five, B, two by nine, C, three by six, or D, four by seven. What is an array? An array is a way to represent multiplication or division 
using columns and rows. The columns go up vertically and the rows go across horizontally. So in the row, in the columns, we have one, two, three. And in the rows, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So the multiplication problem that the teacher was representing with this array is C three times six. Problem number four, which of the following hinders the progress of the student and is therefore a serious concern in the math classroom? A, real world problems, B, conversations on various math topics, C, math misconceptions, or D, casual oral assessments. Let's look at each of these. Real world problems are questions related to real world situations. For example, Sally eats apples every day each week. How many apples does she eat in total every week? So that would not be a hindrance. B, conversations on various math topics. In a math classroom, this should be standard, so not a hindrance either. I'm skipping C and going to D. Casual oral assessments. This is a helpful, if not essential tool, engaging a student's knowledge and understanding of a topic. So that is certainly not a hindrance. Lastly, we look at math misconceptions. Math misconceptions are important to deal with in the math classroom because a math misconception can hold a student back from learning. So the hindrance here is C, math misconceptions. I hope I was able to answer your questions so that you now have a better understanding of the topics you can expect to find on the test. Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that with study.com's help, you will feel confident and prepared on exam day. Bye for now.